Hi, I want to return today to DDD, my DOI dev droid. I'm going to talk about publishing a geometry from DDD. A geometry is about publishing DDD's position against the point of origin. Quite often in robotics, we need to interpret in the instruction and calculate how to move the robot to achieve it. Then do the inverse of that, reading a sensor and recomputing how much of that instruction was achieved. So a lot of what we're going to do in calculating a geometry feels very similar to what we did in interpreting the twist message. Please don't forget to like the video and to subscribe. I really do appreciate it. I'll see you on the other end of the video. Just a quick recap on DDD. DDD is a three-wheeled robot for experimenting with robotics and ROS2 using the Raspberry Pi Pico and Raspberry Pi 4. DDD is driven by two 12 volt motors on the front two wheels. A dual H bridge drives the motors and rotary encoders measure the speed. Speed management is handled by the Pico along with some of the sensors. High level ROS2 functions such as mapping, navigation and communication are handled by the Raspberry Pi 4. Dometry is about understanding where our robot's position is against a point of origin. And by our robot's position we're referring to the base link position which is roughly in the centre of DDD and to that point of origin which we're going to call Odon. And of course we're interested in therefore in what is the vector between those two points. So a point x, y and z to, for, for that vector and of course the quaternion as well, the rotation that the DDD has gone through in relationship to that origin point. Odometry messages actually also include twist data, so they also include basically velocity data around how fast we are moving in a linear direction and angular direction. So it won't surprise you that the odometry message really has the header, which is going to have that odon base uh, frame in it, a child frame, which is going to be our base link, and then it has a pose and a twist. The header, as I said, is going to have a timestamp and that frame ID, which is going to be Odom. The pose is actually the point position and quaternion of rotation for our, our robot. And the twist is the linear and angular accelerations. So that's the message we're going to publish. All the code for the example that I'm going to talk through has been included on GitHub in this repo. And it was included in section six on the HCSR04 project. I just didn't talk about it then because I'm going to talk about it now. The software stack is of course going to all be based on C++ running on a Raspberry Pi Pico. I'm going to use FreeRTOS to maintain tasks and allow me to run multiple things on that uh, processor and use the MicroRos uh, library to be able to communicate out to the wider ROS2 ecosystem. In order to calculate the odometry points on for DDD, I'm actually going to first calculate the odometry position of the center of the axle that's being driven. That's because that's where we're getting the center data three from those two motors. We can then translate that up into the central location for DDD. So over in the code, all of the odometry code is really being controlled from DDD class. So we've got here the definition of the DDD, um, sorry, of the odometry message and, and the publisher for sending out that message. We're also going to need to hold some working copies of what that odometry is. And as we talked about, we're going to hold two values of that. We're going to hold, first of all, what is the um, motor axles odometry position? 
and then we can calculate from that what DDD's odometry position is. I am also going to hold the velocity information. Um, actually that's consistent for both the axle and DDD. Strangely if one's moving the other one ought to be because they're connected together. So um, yeah. So over in the C++, C++ part of uh, the code um, we need to set up this odometry message. That's pretty simple stuff, uh, all of the sorts of things we've done before. Um, we can see here that we're setting up the odom uh, frame, that uh, root position that we're actually measuring our position against, and the base link, uh, which is the position on DDD. And I'm going to just nuke all the values here so that we've got uh, a nice zero position to start from. So to update the odometry, and we're going to do this 10 times a second, we are actually going to get the uh, amount or the degrees of radian or delta of radian rotation of both motors and use that to calculate how far those um, wheels have actually turned. So how much distance have we actually um, managed to move on each wheel? The average of those should be the distance that we've actually travelled on the centre of that axle, which is important. And then we can work out what angle we've ended up. And that will allow us to actually then compute what the X and Y change that we've gone through is. We can then add that X, Y and the angle onto our previous values for the motor's odometry position and use that to then calculate based on the offset for where DDD's base link is, uh, what is uh, DDD's new odometry base position. Finally, we can do a little bit of calculation here to work out how fast we are moving in X, Y and angle of rotation per second around Z. Um, the other, you know, Z, we're not moving in the Z axis uh, unless something's gone horribly wrong and we're not rotating on the X or Y axis, so those values can all remain as zero. So publishing then our odometry is very simply just copying these values over, well actually it's first of all setting up our header and timestamps in that header, then copying over these values from uh, the odometry uh, uh, into the odometry message and then asking our micro ROS bridge uh, object to send it for us. And that's it, pretty simple. So let's uh, have a little look at a demo and see how this works. Listing the topics, we can see the DDD Odon topic is there. I'm gonna echo the topics, but I'm gonna take out the arrays just to reduce it so it actually fits on the screen. And we, here we can see that we're advertising a position of zero, zero. So as I now drag um, DDD forward, we will actually uh, take those forwards, hopefully to a position of 20 centimeters forward from its uh, original starting location. If I reset our dormitory and then drag DDD through 90 degrees, so only turning one wheel, we can see that the X again moves as the position on the X-axis moves, but we also get a rotation. So DDD is now publishing its position against the ODOM origin. I think that's the last of our prerequisites before we can begin looking at LiDAR and mapping. Remember, subscribe so you don't miss my next step. Thank you very much for watching. Please like the video as it helps others find it. And please subscribe and hit that notification button so you don't miss out on my next video. Do take a look at my Patreon page. I'd really appreciate your support in keeping these videos coming. Remember, Patreons get access to my video up to a week early and my personal gratitude. Goodbye for now.